On the week of your NCLEX exam, it's probably one of the most nerve-wracking times in a nursing student's life besides NCLEX itself. And this is probably because you're counting down the days until you're taking your NCLEX, and most of the time people cannot even sleep. I'll give you some tips as how you can maximize this time. And welcome back, this is Nursing Unveil, where we uncover the tips and tricks to nursing success. Number one is do a last mock exam. You want to do this at least three days in advance so that you can have time to really remediate, study, and also look back on anything that you feel you need to. Now, the reason why I say three days in advance is because you are going to be taking the first half of the first day to take the test and then the second half of the day to remediate and of course the next day to remediate the rest. Therefore, you basically only have about a day worth of time to really drill through anything else. If you're taking this last mock exam, you really want to create an environment similar to testing because some of us have testing anxiety and especially for NCLEX, those anxiety are going to kick in. So what I recommend you to do is not only time yourself, but also make sure that you set your belongings aside. And the reason for that is during the NCLEX, you cannot have access to your items right away next to you. So what it's going to be is that you're going to go into the testing room and they're going to assign you a locker. And with that locker, you're going to put your, say, your jacket jacket, your bag, etc. And then of course your cell phone, you're going to give it to the front desk and it's going to be placed in a sealed, completely sealed envelope so that you're not going to be able to have access to that. In addition, you want to make sure that your cell phone is turned off before you do your test because if your phone goes off during the testing, then you're actually going to be prohibited from taking an NCLEX a second time. So you want to create a similar environment and turn that phone off. Number two is a very common mistake, and that is do not study new material during your last week of your exams. The reason is that during your last week, you're probably not going to remember much of that new information that you try to cram in. Most of the time, people tell you the more questions you practice, the better. And in the very beginning stages, yes, that could be true. But towards the end, that is definitely not the case. And ultimately, you're just going to stress yourself out and burn yourself out and, you know, it's not really a goal of reaching 5,000 questions, 2,000 questions. It's a matter of how much you retain that information. Remember, the goal of NCLEX is really just to pass the NCLEX. Once you pass the NCLEX, you get your license. So that, that's all you need to focus on. New material that you want to actually focus on is your last assessment that you took. And this way, you are able to really summarize what you have to studied. Grain detailed information on a topic to maximize your chance of getting those status correctly. Or select all that apply, I should say. Because one of the worst feelings in these nursing exams is when you don't know whether a status option applies to a topic that you're quite familiar with so you don't want to miss that chance tip number three that is going off of do not study new material is make sure you revisit high yield topics and being is when we study so much information is similar to when we overstudy and therefore we forget similar topics now i compile a list of some of the most high yield topics that you want to make sure you know of and therefore right now i'm going to actually direct my eyes to my computer so therefore you might see me looking down So the first one is Addison versus Cushing, make sure you know that. And next one is chronic kidney disease, cirrhosis, diuretics, ADH, sepsis, potassium, what the role of potassium is, and also what are the drugs related to potassiums. Next is emergency cardiac medication. Then we have precautions. For precautions, I think this one is probably going to be a big one because right now we're in a pandemic. And therefore, you want to make sure you know how our droplet differs from airborne and how that is different from contact and what are the PPEs that you need to dress up for for each of these conditions. The next two I'm going to mention is a little bit glossed over. It is TB and what is considered positive measurements. There is a chart that lists whether you're in the vulnerable versus if you're not so vulnerable. So make sure you know those measurements that consider a positive TB test. Then we have morning signs of cancer. And this one we tend to gloss over just because we think we know the acronym, but sometimes we actually do not. So <laughs> just make sure you look over that. Next up, we have maternity topics. Now for maternity topics, you want to make sure you know fundus height and how that correlates to the weeks of gestation in a baby. And also what are non-stress tests versus contraction stress tests. And we have preeclampsia versus eclampsia. And changes in the female body during pregnancy. Along with that, we want to know female positioning how to optimize oxygenation in female body, say perhaps if there's emergency or even just in general, how to make sure that they get oxygenated. With that, fetal positioning is also important. Next up, we have blood transfusion. What are the criteria and what are the steps to blood transfusion? And going on a similar note is TPA. What are the criteria to give TPA? What you want to screen for before giving TPA? 
All right, y'all, so I just went through my NCLEX prep binder just now, and there's a couple things that I wanted to add to the list, and at the same time, I'm going to show you guys what those items are and what those some of those notes are. So if you want, you could just take a photo from this screenshot, and that way you can have that inf information to yourself. So any toxicity, you definitely want to note that. So the first one is definitely digoxin, is one of the main ones that tends to be asked. Theophylline toxicity is also a big one, so make sure you know what the side effects are and what are the ranges that that will take place. Another big one is INR in relation to warfarin. And on a similar note, you want to also note heparin, especially before a warfarin takes place. Heparin tends to be, uh, IV heparin drip is tends to be something that we give to patients. So you want to note that as well. And of course, pneumonia and COPD, those two tends to be big ones as well, especially even if you were to go into a job interview, sometimes they may even ask you for case scenarios. Those two tends to pop up as well. So that's another thing to note for the future. And moving on, we have sickle cell crisis, field island, and also DM. Definitely for sickle cell crisis and DM, those two tends to be big select all applied questions, so make sure you study those. And on a similar note, you want to know hypoglycemia. They always tend to trick people with hypoglycemia side effects, so make sure you know what are signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. For scales, you want to know APGAR and also Glasgow Coma Scales. Those two are tends to be big ones when it comes to testing, so make sure you know how to score those. Going into neuro, know your meningitis. It tends to be a big select our applied questions as well. So make sure you know those signs and symptoms. And especially what are the precautions that you need to take and PPE that you need to dress for being you are given meningitis patients. Hemorrhage, we want to know what are two types of hemorrhage in the brain. Then we also have maternity hemorrhage, right? When there are postpartum, what tends to happen and how should we try to care, take care of these patients. Next, we have lithium and malignant hypertension and just any of those adverse effects of psych medications. Then into peace, we definitely want to know developmental milestones. And the last one is insulin. For insulin, you want to know times and also restrictions. Like for example, which one can be given in IV form or which one can be mixed and what are the peak times with given a mixed insulin. Um, or this is if you have time, is revisit all your self-assessment tests and mock exams that you did. Or if you have trouble deciding which source to use, I highly recommend this video up over here. It is Kaplan or UWorld. I tell you exactly which source you want to use, and that way you can really focus on just one source towards your last week. Most of the time, these are high yield topics. And of course, if you don't know what our high yield topics are that you want to study for, this is also a great way to really maximize your time. Number five is know your normal ranges. What I suggest is looking at these values every day, and it could be just a couple minutes of skimming, or if you want to do something that is gonna be more beneficial is actually taking a piece of paper or whiteboard and just keep practicing writing those numbers out. And with that physical movement, it's better for you to memorize those values. Now, what I also did is I posted those values in front of my NCLEX prep binder. So that is right in front of me whenever I go to that study material. With that said, let me know if you guys want to see how I did my NCLEX prep binder. If you do, please leave a comment down below so I know what to do for my next video and also give you guys some inspiration as to how you could do one for yourself. Number six is reminding yourself that you do know this material. You've been drilling through this material months now. There is nothing new to it. By reminding yourself, you're able to keep yourself sane through this last week. Also, another important tip is you want to isolate yourself from your peers. This is because during that last week, it is also about the same time your other peers are going to take the NCLEX as well. So most of the time, they're going to be having anxiety, they don't know what to do, and they're going to be talking to you, they're going to be telling you how many questions they're, they're having, and what percentile they're getting, and just a lot of distractors and anxiety-causing factors that you do not want to surround yourself with. Number seven is get a good night's sleep. Now, I know this sounds cliche, but however, it, you'll be surprised as to how fast you can focus and answer to questions when you actually get a good night's sleep. So to give you an example, my school does Kaplan Predictor exam as our exiting exam. And therefore, I remember the night before I slept a good night's sleep. The next morning, I woke up, I was refreshed. I reviewed some labs and then I had to go and commute to school for my test. Then once I took my exam, I was so laser sharp focused. I was able to drill through those questions immediately. I did not even have to feel like I have to focus in that test. My mind just clicked. I just knew where to direct those keywords to make sure I get those questions correctly without me even feel like I have to focus on that. At the same time, when I was taking that test, I felt like I was actually in the zone. So I did not take any breaks at all. And I was able to just go through that test from question one all the way down to question 100. I ended up being the first person to finish that exam in my group, 
until 15 minutes later, the next person finished their exam. And really just believe in yourself. What is meant to happen will happen. So if you have any other questions, comments, please leave a comment down below. I'd like to see what are your concerns and I will make sure to reply to all your comments. I hope you like that. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I have new videos every Monday, so make sure you come back and check it out. All right, until next time, bye. Oh, 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 o